Hey folks, welcome back to the channel again, nice to see you. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about feeding. I'm specifically going to talk about puffers because that's what I've been learning about most recently, but I guess it applies to most um, species of fish. In fact, I knew some things, or I found out some things I already knew because of my discus keeping experience. I just hadn't thought to apply it to the puffer fish. But anyway, it's about diet, it's about what to feed your fish, it's what's good for a fish, what's not good for a fish. So as you know, I've got a little Mabu puffer down here. Um, I've had him since he was really tiny, got him just before Christmas, and I've been growing him out. He's just moved into this larger tank, which is going to be his interim home. Uh, and in the shop where I bought him, he was being fed on mussels. Um, I primarily fed him on mussels, snails, shrimp, um, or prawns, whatever you want to call them, uh, to get him to this size and thanks to someone pointing it out, so I always like criticism, so I'm more than happy to engage in discussion. So someone pointed out um, that that possibly wasn't the best diet, and that made me think a little bit, and a little bit of discussion there um, made me think possibly worth making a video about this, because I bet you a lot of people don't think about this. So a quick shout out to whatever the group's called that I'll put here, um, but Macaulay from there, he reached out to me, we had a little bit of a chat a couple of weeks ago, um, and I've been doing a lot of research ever since. So as a quick catch up, this is my discus tank primarily. Um, those of you who have been here for a while, you will know I've been struggling with algae issues in this tank, but we're getting on top of them. Slowly but surely everything's coming back. Um, but the last major update for this tank was this little guy here. He's my Mabu Puffer, named by my daughter as Puffy. Although I think second place in the poll to name him was Keith. So maybe I'll call him Keith as the nickname. Yeah, so he's been in here a couple of weeks now. Um, he's doing really well. If anything, people who are worried about him picking off the, the cardinal tetras that we've got in here or nipping the fins of the discus, it's 100% been the other way. Um, he fights with the discus for his food and the discus fight with him. The cardinals chase him around. He looks to be having a great old time in here. So what Macaulay had pointed out to me was that feeding him a muscle-rich diet um, was leaving him susceptible to thymonase. Um, so thymonase is it's an enzyme which it's not good in large quantities basically. So in humans I think we have vitamin B1 which is broken down by thymonase and that's what gives you energy which controls your nerves or, or a lack of it will give you nerve damage a lack of energy and various other problems and I knew about this within the discus community so some of my discus up there in the discus world um, or at least a few years back there was lots of concern about whirling disease where the fish would just whirl basically and a lot of people were blaming that on a muscle-rich uh, beef heart mix, or muscle heart mix. Um, and it's the same problem. So if that's affecting their nervous system to such a degree, it's going to do exactly the same thing to a puffer's or any other fish's um, nervous system, or just contribute to a very poor rate of growth, um, susceptibility to sickness, all, all bad things. Nothing good is going to come of it, basically. So we want to avoid that. I mean, it's not. There's nothing wrong with it in small doses, uh, and generally there are. You're talking about um, crustaceans and mussels as the main place a fish keeper is going to come in contact with these things. If you're feeding your fish those things, and exclusively those things, then that's going to be a bad day eventually. Now, in general, what you're looking for with any fish um, is three things, really, from a diet. You're looking for, for nutrition. Obviously, you want to be feeding your fish a very nutritious meal. Um, you're going to look for, in a puffer fish case, if it's a mabu or any of the ones with the beaks, you want to get something that is going to help wear down that beak, or teeth, as some people like to call it. Um, and I guess there's a, an element of excitement or enjoyment or enrichment. So if you can meet those three things with your diet, then you're doing really well. Um, 
personally I believe a balanced diet is really important and when I say balanced diet I don't mean lots of different things in equal quantities which a lot of people seem to think that's what balanced means I mean balanced as in it's getting the right mix and the right balance of all the nutrients or all the elements needed to make up a good diet if you fed one thing, one pellet to a fish forever and it had the exact right balance of all the nutrients and everything that a fish needed that would be a balanced diet even though it was one thing I mean the ideal for me is a pellet that this fish will take that has exactly the right balance of ingredients in there to meet all the nutritional needs now I know a lot of you out there will be thinking Ooh, but fish don't eat pellets in the wild well moron fish don't live in glass boxes in the wild either so we have to make some compromises and if the compromise is made to make the fish's health better then that's only a good thing so I mentioned snails as well, snails, aquatic snails, ramhorn snails, things like that. I thought they were a good food, but um, they can be a really good way to introduce worms into your aquarium or into the diet and into the fish. And fish like puffers who are very susceptible to worms, then, you know, that's not a good thing either. So what can you feed or what are the good foods that are recommended? So. I've started feeding cockles instead of mussels. In fact, let's see if we can feed them one now. I've got one kicking about here. I've just got them on some tongs at the moment. I'm just trying this out for the moment. Um, what I have noticed is that the discus really like them, so they go for it first. If I can get the reflections away from that. Get off! It's for him. Um, but I did feed this guy not that long ago, so he might not go for it. But I'll drop it down in that general direction. But yeah, he's got the discus fighting over it. Go on, have a little bit. But anyway, cockles rather than mussels. Um, any kind of white fish really is good, uh, better than um, mussels or prawns. Um, earthworms, terrestrial snails, they're really good. So you might have seen in my last video that I've bought a, a breeding group of snails, or a couple of breeding group of snails, to start using them to feed him, to keep his shell worn, uh, to keep his beak worn down. Yeah, that's, he's not having any of that. You can see his belly's still quite fat from the earlier feeding. I mean, pellets are good. If you've got a good quality pellet that you trust, why not try and get your puffer onto pellets? I've done pellet training in the past with other fish. You can do techniques like, make a, if you are feeding a prawn, Make a little incision, slip a little pellet inside and then make the prawn smaller and smaller over time to eventually the fish is just accepting the pellet. Um, clams, they're also good. So there are a wide variety of options out there. Um, it's just maybe take a minute to do a little bit of your own research or talk to some of the experts. Uh, I would definitely recommend joining a good group um, whether it's on Facebook or your local fish club or something like that because you can get loads of great information certainly I've found loads of good information joining uh, this Facebook group so I hope you don't find that too preachy or anything like that it's really just to start a discussion about these sort of things by all means drop some comments down below and we can have that discussion I think it's really important that we do talk about these things because if people just go blindly feeding what the last guy told them about I mean. The fish shop were feeding this fish mussels. I didn't think twice about it, even though I already knew about the problems that feeding mussels could um, bring. So the more that we spread this awareness around about the, the potential dangers of the thymonese, um, a thymonese heavy diet, um, the fewer problems people will have in the future. Anyway, I hope you found it a little bit useful. Like I say, drop a link, drop a, drop a, drop a comment down below and give some tips or tricks or ask some questions and people will hopefully help you out and until then after you click the subscribe button i'll see you next time bye